The inhaled corticosteroid fluticasone was recently approved for the maintenance of asthma in children as young as five years old. And this is also great news because it gives uh, us confidence to be able to prescribe these medications in children for uh, increasing their uh, asthma control. Um, the benefit of that is we hope in the, in the long run will help to reduce their oral steroid uh, dosage needs as well as just maintain their disease in a way such that we preserve their lung function as, we go, as they grow through their development. One of the downsides of asthma and having asthma flares, especially in children, is the loss of lung function over time. And so in order to protect that um, response and preserve lung function and as well as um, all the other benefits that come from asthma control in children, um, having a once daily medication is, is beneficial. And as we know, it's, it's hard to do studies in children. It's hard to get children to take medications. So if we can find a simple way of, of delivering medications once a day um, in a way that will help to reduce the burden of symptoms um, and other effects, um, then I think we're on the right track. The current field of pediatric asthma is very exciting because it has now, I think, finally embraced the multiple dimensions of what is contributing to poor asthma in children. Um, and I think this involves an, a greater appreciation of all the environmental factors that have um, influenced the development of asthma as well as the progression of asthma. We have a greater understanding of environmental influences even as early as during the gestational period during pregnancy and really getting a greater appreciation that those factors heavily influence um, what child outcomes are going to be later in life. Um, one of the bigger challenges that we've had has been childhood obesity. And we know that obesity rates have risen across the population, but specifically in children. And its impact on asthma is yet to be seen, but we do think that there's relationships between child obesity rates as well as asthma rates. And trying to disentangle how we can better address this is still up in the air. And a lot of the therapies that we've been discussing so far have been looking at more individual and targeted approaches, trying to understand which kids are going to benefit from certain therapies. Um, we've had the evolution of what we call biologic therapy, which are steroid sparing therapy, and trying to better understand which child would benefit from these is also going to be very important. So I think for the first time we're getting an expansive understanding of all the other factors that are playing a role in asthma and then trying to target each of them in a global fashion.